Welcome back to News 8 Morning Extra. It is one of the most common New Year's resolutions. Millions of people are trying to lose weight and adopt a healthier lifestyle. But are any of those fad diets that you hear about the answer? Clinical nutritionist Tara Coleman is here to talk about the pros and the cons of some of these diets. Tara, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay, Thank you yeah. hear so much, and I see so many people on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook tagging these various diets. So let's just go down the list and sort of talk about pros and cons here. Absolutely. The low carb, the Atkins diet. I call it the hangry diet. Yes, yes. It's funny that you say that because carbohydrates help us produce serotonin. So when you're not getting enough carbs, you're not producing serotonin. So you really are a miserable And I'm human mean. Being. I'm so mean yeah, when exactly. I try to go low carb. Exactly. But for some people, it really does work? Or what well, do you it's think? really the most universal. If you go out on the street, strangers will tell and say, I want to lose weight. Strangers will say, cut carbs. But kind of an interesting fact of the um, National Diet Registry or the National Weight Loss Registry, which is a database of all the people that have successfully lost weight, only less than 1% have actually used a low carb diet. Wow. Isn't that interesting? That is very interesting. Yeah. So it's not that, um, you know, it's not that low carbs are bad, but we actually do need them. It's difficult to get enough fiber. It's difficult to get ma enough magnesium by completely cutting carbs out. So it's great to add in veggies and, you know, lean protein and things like that. But I would say at least a fistful of carbs at, at every single and meal. And a healthy carb. We're not talking about potato chips here. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I wish yes. we were, but we're not. There are different carbs. Yes. Potato chips do not equal brown rice right. okay. or quinoa. They're all completely different. <laughs> okay. So a little bit of carbs sprinkled in uh, well, might be a better option. A lot of people are into this Whole30 yes. diet or some of these cleanses that mm -hmm. are out there. What is the Whole30 diet? So basically, um, the Whole30 diet is an elimination diet. What not a lot of people realize is it's basically a strategy to figure out what foods don't work for your body. So it's it not- like a good idea in theory. Absolutely, it, but it's not a weight loss diet and it's not something that you should do for 30 days and stop. And that's the problem with cleanses is there's an end date. And, and you don't ever want an end date. You, you want to make changes that you're going to do forever. So if you are doing a cleanse, be it the Whole30, be it a juice cleanse, be it a soup cleanse, really focus on coming off of the cleanse. That's more important than the actual cleanse itself. Making long-term lifestyle changes, exactly. not just a month here, a month there. Exactly. All right, the ketogenic diet. Yes. So keto is um, probably the biggest rage right now. And essentially what, what keto is, is it's an extremely high fat, extremely low carb diet. Um, it's what Atkins was actually as, as well. So that's, um, it's just kind of a revamp of Atkins. Of Atkins, okay. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're getting about 70 to 80% of your calories from fat about 20 from protein, and then a very small amount from carbohydrates. And you said this is not a good idea, or you think it is? You know, I'm not a big fan of it. It is a great therapeutic diet. It came from um, treating patients with, with epilepsy, which was fantastic. Um, but for the average person, it's just not a sustainable, healthy diet, um, especially for women with the serotonin I was talking about earlier with, with the low carb. But also, if you have any thyroid conditions or things like that, it can trigger some pretty negative side effects. Okay. Now, the, another really popular fad diet out there right now is fasting, where you eat only during certain hours of the day. Yes. Um, it's called intermittent fasting. And basically, you're exactly right. You, you have these eating windows. So let's say you'll eat for six hours a day and then fast for 18 hours a day. Um, I like intermittent fasting in theory. Um, I think as with everything, people do a little bit you know, too extreme with it. But I would say if you're gonna try it, try a 12 hour fast. And so that's a good first step. So what that means is let's say you wake up and have breakfast at 8 a.m. That means you stop eating at 8 p.m. We just yeah. had some uh, researchers here from the Salk Institute talking mm -hmm. about that exact fasting diet and that 12-hour mm -hmm. window and how successful that is for people because we don't yes. realize we don't get enough sleep, which means we eat like 20 hours a day. Exactly. Not exactly. A good idea. And that's it. Like I said, that's a great first step. A lot of people will jump into the six-hour eating window because I don't know. We like to do things kind of extreme, um, and that's a very advanced form. So start with 12, see how it goes, and and go from there. From there. You mm -hmm. do that six hour window, you will be hangry. Yes, you'll be very hangry. <laughs>